Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and guess who's come back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, I wanted to make this sort of a final conclusion video. I keep tabs on a lot of people on the internet, people that I've usually covered in the past, and this will be the final definitive video, and a cautionary tale to people watching on the internet who always say, what if cancellations never work? Now, ladies and gentlemen, EDP445 has returned once again to YouTube.com. With around 11,000 something subscribers at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, EDP has returned once again. Now, if you remember, EDP was a large YouTuber back in the day that had millions of subscribers. YouTube terminated their account. EDP, for those who are not caught up on the lore, way back in the day, over a year ago at this point, was caught in a YouTuber sting operation done by a group known as CC Unit. In this sting operation, an hour-long something sting operation, EDP was basically caught trying to interact, allegedly, with somebody well under the age of 18. Now, in EDP's defense, he wanted to simply have a cupcake. Of course, if one looks up this video again and watches a re-upload of it, you might come to a different conclusion at the end. I'm only saying alleged because someone like EDP was not caught during the sting operation. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to really start off with sting operations and why they can be really, really, really sketchy to do. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you might have watched shows like To Catch a Predator. You might have watched a lot of those shows where on television, big personalities, notably Chris Hansen, would go out and do sting operations and catch people on the Internet trying to interact with people under the age of 18. Of course, as you can understand, this is illegal basically everywhere, okay? Now, in the United States, if you try to do something like this, you get sent to prison for a very, very long time. And once you get out of prison, your life is basically over, okay? Hell, once you get a criminal record in general, your life is basically diminished. But of course, when Chris Hansen does a sting operation, you might notice in those episodes, law enforcement agents are always sitting inside a garage. Some of them are just sitting in, in, in the grass with ghillie suits on, Okay, full on 95% tactical Metal Gear Solid 3 level camouflage. Okay, they got that Neo Moss shit equipped, meaning they're not visible until they need to be. So, of course, when those law enforcement officers are present, that's a very good indication that that sting operation was basically done in, you know, groups of law enforcement. You can have vigilante groups do a lot of the work, but they need to be working with law enforcement agents. That's why a lot of those cases, not all, you know, a, a good chunk of them, oftentimes lead to actual convictions. Because when law enforcement is involved, they can make sure that everything that happens follows a proper procedure, there's proper levels of evidence, you know, captured, the evidence that is captured can be used in a court of law, and people can be put in prison, okay? When YouTubers do it, or somebody goes and does it on the internet, you never really know what kind of methods they use. And oftentimes I used to watch a lot of this content on YouTube and it really came from people that I guess had the right state of mind. Like they wanted to stop really bad people, but the way that they were committing investigations, running after individuals, and you can find a whole litany of these channels on YouTube. It oftentimes made it so that whatever they did couldn't be used in a court of law. Literally, law enforcement agents will tell you, do not do this, okay? So for instance, Sacramento, California, there were literally YouTubers, in this case, Alex Rosen, the same Alex Rosen that was caught with the EDP sting operation. Alex Rosen, for those of you who don't know, also known online at the time as Chet Goldstein, here the man is at an NRA, anti-NRA protest in Houston, literally trying to trigger the protesters over here. A lot of people didn't recognize who this person was. I remember when I saw him quote tweeted by like actual like, you know, reporters, I was like, it was that Leonardo DiCaprio meme. Whoa, I know that guy. That was basically me. So the guy is basically a provocateur. From what I understand and from what I saw of him last time, he was also an absolute abhorrent piece of shit. He wasn't exactly as bad as what EDP was allegedly caught up mixed in with. Of course, though, you know, both sides can be garbage. I just want to reiterate that. Now, of course, you can literally see them talk about the situation right here because uh, when one like local agency, Fox, for instance, when they actually got up and caught up and talked to somebody who was caught in a sting operation, they couldn't eat. They had to conceal the identity because they were never charged with a crime to which uh, Alex Rosen said, we drop our age immediately. We don't give them any doubts to how old we are, whether there's an arrest or not for, for Rosen and his team. There is a mission behind each video. The reason we do it is that there is such a problem of predators now, Rosen says. Now, ladies and gentlemen, law enforcement has a bit of a different viewpoint on this situation. 
For instance, Assistant Deputy Chief Don Bladett of the Sacramento County District's Attorney Office said that this activity should be left to the professionals. They do them with training. They know the protocols. They know what can be said and what can't be said, what should and shouldn't be transmitted online. Even with the video, it's still not enough evidence to convict somebody. A judge or jury would need more details not seen or heard on camera. They want to know where in the ad was placed, how the communications happened, all the comms that happened between the two individuals. The DA office said they prosecuted two cases stemming from YouTube videos the past summer, but added that the videos were not used as evidence in the trials. Yes, sometimes they will take a tip from people. They'll take a tip and then they'll do the investigation themselves. In most cases, they actually don't use any of the YouTube investigations because that evidence is oftentimes tainted and can't be used or admitted into a court of law. Another news network actually investigated said law enforcement agencies asked for comment by indicated that they would rather such groups stay out of the way. We are aware of them, said Matt Hedden, director of the Special Victims Unit inside the Kentucky Office of the Attorney General. We've seen them at both the local and national level. And then they basically talk about how they have actual highly trained investigators and they know the procedures and laws required. I actually got so interested with this topic that I actually wanted to look up how things could have been misstrewed by the court of law. And one such example is the concept of entrapment. Obviously, for those of you who don't know what entrapment is, here's a really good legal definition on, an, uh, on, a, on journalism by the Oklahoma Legal Group. Entrapment occurs when there is an inducement on the part of the government actor. Merely presenting the subject with an opportunity to commit a crime is not entrapment. A good analogy is opening the door to criminal activity. Law enforcement officers can open the door for a suspect to step through and commit a crime. But they cannot push the suspect through the door by use of force, threats, harassment, fraud, flattery, and any other directly or indirectly coercive action. Even though government actors can lie to suspects, they can't use heavy-handed force or coercion. Now, imagine an entrapment case. From what I understand, this basically means that, let's say that I was an undercover police officer, right? Officer Muda's standing on the park alleyway, okay? He's just he's just minding his own business. And, he, and you walk by me, and I'm like, hey, you want to buy some drugs off me? And uh, you might look at me and be like, you know, I might want to partake in such an illegal activity. Drugs are bad. Never buy them or produce them. I'm not endorsing that in any capacity. Committing crimes is bad. Now, imagine I, like, what I've done is I've opened the door for you to commit a criminal activity. Now, of course, in this example, let's say that you came up to me and you wanted to buy, right? And let's say you gave me the money. I gave you the drugs. You've committed a crime. And from my understanding, I did not entrap you. I merely presented the opportunity. Now, if you are looking at me and you're like, I don't know, that seems pretty sus. Let me walk away. Now, imagine if I, the undercover officer, is like, hey, don't walk away there, buddy. This is some real good shit. Hey, I'll even throw in some goddamn G fuel into the mix right here, Code Sog, by the way. Uh, you want you want to buy this now? You want to get it? You want to buy it? It'll make you go straight to the moon. Buy it. If I started doing that, you can get a lawyer, any bargain bin lawyer, and they'll tell you, wow, I just entrapped you from what I understand. See, not only did I present the door, but I basically, in a way, kind of coerced you into committing a crime. Now, of course, in a lot of ways, when these kind of investigations are done, how they communicate themselves, you know, how these predator poachers handle themselves, how they communicate to their target can oftentimes be the make it or break it from what is entrapment or what isn't. And when you get a lawyer and you know exactly how to shut up, a lot of times people like this can get away. Now, EDP has not ever been charged by this as far as I've been understanding. I actually have not even heard of any actual formal investigations against somebody like EDP, which basically shows you that the entire investigation investigation that was done might have shown him to the public to be a little bit of a creepy individual for sure for lack of, you know just just kind of understanding it a little bit but in the eyes of the law EDP cannot be charged from what it seems it seems anything in this investigation is effectively null and void in the eyes of any state or local police department even beyond that EDP can easily get himself a lawyer and find a way to navigate himself out of a situation like this granted the person's public you know perception is tarnished but EDP will not be seeing a prison cell unless he, you know, specifically admits to something or turns himself in and really admits or commits a crime in this case, right? Which as far as the eyes of the law have gone, not really a case. 
Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, EDP 445 has returned to the platform. Now, of course, EDP has been uploading videos, actually plenty of them for several days. About nine days ago, EDP started making this. This account was basically formed 3rd October 2013, meaning that it's pretty much an old school account that sort of existed for a while. I assume the names have probably been shifted around, but a lot of these videos are pretty new. Now, for a lot of these channels, EDP channels pop up from time to time like any banned YouTuber. And usually, it's always mostly a fake channel, right? A lot of the videos can oftentimes be simple re-uploads. But in this case, this is actually EDP uploading content. And in fact, if you want to get any close idea of it, this video itself is a pretty good explanation. Let's listen to it. All right, y'all, what the f*** cracking with it? It's your boy, Eat That Pussy 445. Coming back at you, ho ass, no light trolling mother get another goddamn video so immediately i have to put a lot of beeps into the video but he started off the video by saying coming at you live to you trolling ass losers out there so it's a, it's a little recent and of course edp because of the actual public stigma around him definitely is a subject for trolling and i want to start off by saying i don't condone any harassment or brigading do not brigade any subject on a community there's never really any reason to do so video before i get into the video i want to give a huge huge shout out and thank you to all of my close friends um i'm gonna i'm gonna put a hard sus on that one okay what close friend woof i hope i hope they haven't seen the video if they're still close friends i hope they haven't seen the confrontation all of the real friends that decided to stick by me that didn't believe the lies that didn't believe the bullshit um that still don't believe the bullshit that's going around even to ah and there it is boys you know that little part inside me that always said you know what you know maybe this person can't change their life around has all been eliminated from my soul okay i know in the last times where i ever covered edp months ago where i was like you know what maybe this person if they turn themselves into prison will could probably get to some form of rehabilitation program really face the demons they have within them Obviously, EDP will not admit to committing any crime because let's say EDP has a lawyer and the lawyer says, shut up about what you did. Don't admit any guilt. EDP can't admit guilt. And you also don't want to admit guilt, period, if you haven't been formally charged by law enforcement. It's only simple logic that you don't actually admit to anything. But clearly, there is no remorse in this situation. Now, a lot of people have always wondered, like, is the cancellation ever really a cancellation? And in this case, absolutely. Months ago, we actually had come across a TikTok channel run by EDP. Since then, that TikTok channel has been removed. And of course, like most of EDP's channels on YouTube, once YouTube figures out that this is another case of ban evasion, they will remove him. It's another case similar to a YouTuber known as Lion Maker, if you haven't remembered him. Lion Maker was a YouTuber that basically got arrested back in the years of, I believe, 2016? Like, he was, inve he was actually investigated by the Belgian and UK police. Like, according, according to this one article, he was in, like, a Belgian jail for 10 months under arrest wheeze, which is basically a process that lets police detain individuals who they deem a danger to society. Now, of course, at that point, all right, Lion Maker, once out of prison, once out of any form of detainment, came back to YouTube plenty of times. He basically started creating channels, YouTube detected them, and then YouTube basically shut any case of them down. It really did involve a lot of YouTubers that I know behind the scenes that basically were sending in constant references to YouTube's community guidelines, their people, basically articles of this YouTuber and how they were basically put into prison and their last bans, and YouTube promptly ended up getting rid of their accounts. Of course, for YouTube to enforce certain TOSs, I know it's a bit of a hot topic these days, given what things have been going on with the ACT ban, but that's generally how things work. Once you've been banned for shit like this, once you've been banned, period, coming back from time to time, you'll always be able to have some like YouTube channel until YouTube ends up picking onto it. Now, of course, initially when I saw these channels, I didn't want to make a video on it, but a lot of people think that because EDP is back, there's going to be some massive resurgence. Well, with a channel that's gotten 11,000 subscribers, mostly off of the backs of commentary videos like this that constantly expose and look this stuff up, these channels cannot stay up for as long as they do. But effectively, what's going on here is EDP will not be able to monetize this channel at all, okay? EDP is not going to be able to run monetization on any of these systems simply because EDP has already been banned from the system once. Once he has to like get that AdSense form and fill out his actual name, address, you know, his like social like insurance numbers, I believe, with like YouTube for tax reasons, YouTube will be like, oh no, we've noticed you before. You're out of the system. Goodbye. That's pretty much the end of it. Effectively, all EDP can do at the moment is run a merch funnel.
Basically, EDP still has a website up, edp445.com, where EDP will basically say, we in the building, I'm uploading new videos for you guys daily and keeping the new content fresh. You can like order a cameo from EDP for 25, oh, you're saving $25, right? Bam, there you go. Now, of course, you've also got YouTube uploads. These are always just like other channels that have covered this. Um, you know, just links to other channels, you know, where like his re-upload still lives, I, I, I guess. There's live streaming, and I don't know how this is going to happen. Maybe EDP is going to get his own RTMP server. But effectively, what's, what's happening over here is EDP's got like a merch funnel. So basically, you can buy like t-shirts, hoodies or something that EDP's probably got through like Teespring. And re regardless of how fallen off your career is, you will always always be able to sell merch maybe not a lot but enough to make some decent living coming by in fact even in that video where edp is basically putting back i had to censor this thumbnail simply because edp is holding a shoddy like john Gotti. and of course edp has a pretty sizable gun collection of course that gun collection has since actually been dropped edp has basically been selling a lot of his assets and firearms from what i understand edp had to sell his car and he had to start selling his guns because obviously you can understand with this kind of a public stink when people google your name you're not easily able to get a job you know people at the beginning of this video i asked is a cancellation ever really a cancellation and while edp hasn't gone to jail his prospects of ever getting a job in the near future are absolutely nil with this kind of a stink on you unless you legally change your name you change everything you even leave the country and start living somewhere new i'm talking full scorched earth build yourself up from nothing there's this stink will always follow you now of course edp has got a few firearms left a lot of scars for instance which fetch a pretty penny somewhere up to like five thousand dollars on average right and once these guns start whittling down and edp sells the last asset that he has at that point he may be completely broke Honestly, the best thing EDP could do to turn life around is completely disappear off the internet, completely change his name, completely change all of his like addresses, completely, maybe even leave the country and start life completely new under a new pseudonym, new alias, whatever. Because like I said before, that stink will never wash off, all right? Once you have embarrassed yourself in the eyes of the public this hard and you've made yourself look this vilified, there's just no way to come back. And the only thing that EDP can do, because he's not facing any remorse through this, he doesn't really feel like he's done anything wrong. If he wants a chance at life again, it has to be completely fresh, start new, start somewhere, absolutely at the bottom rung of the ladder, and hopefully no one will recognize you. Yes, this is the case, this is the tale of EDP 445, a man that once became one of the largest memes on the internet, one of the biggest, most popular memes out there, a man that could fill a Chipotle toilet and absolutely make a trending video out of it, has absolutely fallen into obscurity, a man that has no future unless they choose to completely detach themselves from the internet and start completely new. It really shows you how a cupcake and 24 hours on the internet alone can basically get you from the top of the world all the way to the absolute minimal bottom. But EDP is up there with infamous characters like Line Maker, who will constantly come back to YouTube trying to get a little bit of an audience, maybe make a sale on a t-shirt or a hoodie here and there. But the real scary aspect is as they keep coming back, as they keep creating accounts on social media platforms, the real scary, scary thing that I always worry about and the reason why I always want these people banned from the face of the earth is once they've basically shown themselves to be very shady characters in investigations, I fear for how they use their social media platforms and the interaction features that they could be potentially allegedly be using with minors on a platform, right? I would not trust EDP around minors on a personal level. And it scares me to wonder how many platforms EDP is still running alts on, how many platforms he still has his face on, and how many people, potentially minors, that he constantly gets goaded into. Maybe maybe people from TikTok who are minors who haven't heard about this jump into DMs, maybe even from YouTube. That's the real scary aspect of it. But as far as EDP's career and the cancellation, he is without a definitively gone from the platform and he is without a doubt done on the internet. It's a real scary tale. But did EDP deserve every bit of it? Did EDP deserve losing his platform after the stuff that he was caught allegedly doing? I'd say the internet considers yes. That said though, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.